We just studied the Sutram 1449, Karturi Sita Tamam Karma, which assigns the designation Karma object to that participant in the action, that karakam, which the doer most desires to obtain or reach through the action. Let us now take another sutra, which also gives the designation karma. Sutram is 1451, a kasitancha. This is a short cryptic sutram composed by Parini, but has quite a involved meaning. So let us look at the vritti and see what it says. Apadana divise shair ravivakshitam karakam karma sanyam syat, which means that a karakam, a participant in the action, which has no other specific designation like apadana, which is ablation, etc., gets the designation karma object of the action. Now, so far we have not studied these terms apadanam, etc. They come in the same adhikara of karake, which starts from 1423. 1424 itself talks about the apadana sanya. Dhruvama paye padanam. We will take a look at these later. These rules assign designations like apadanam, etc. to certain participants in the action. Now, Akatitancha says that if a karakam, which has no other specific designation like apadanam, etc., that gets the designation of karma. So, in other words, when the speaker does not wish to express a particular participant in the action as a apadana karakam, ablation, etc., then that karakam, which the speaker has not given any specific designation, gets the designation karma. Now, does that mean that for any verbal root in the language, we could have a situation where the speaker does not want to express a karakam as a padanam, etc., and hence uh, it gets the designation karma? The answer is no. There are only certain verbal roots, which are called as dvikarmakadhatavaha, verbal roots which can take two objects. It is only in relation to these certain verbal roots and no others that we can have this situation where there are two objects of the same verbal root. Now, which are these verbal roots? They are given in the following couplet. Duyach pach dandridhi prachi chi bru shasu ji mat musham. Karma yuk syad kathitam tatha syani r krish vaham, which is explained further in the Siddhanta Kamvadi as follows Duhadi nan dvadashanan tatha ni prabhriti nan chaturnang karmana yad yujjate tadeva kathitam karmeti parigananam kartavyam mityarthaha. Parigananam means enumeration, kartavyam is to be done, which means that we cannot have two objects connecting with any and every verbal root in the language. This behavior of taking two objects is limited to only these 16 verbal roots and their synonyms. That is what is called as parigananam, means a listing is done of which verbal roots display this behavior and hence this sutram gives a designation karma only when a karakam is connected with the object of any one of these verbal roots only. So, a karakam, a participant in the action which connects with the primary object of any one of only the following 12 plus 4 equals 16 verbal roots and their synonyms gets the designation karma as long as no other specific designation like apadanam etc. has been assigned to it. When the speaker does not want to express a karakam as a apadanam etc. then this sutram 1451 a comes and assigns the karma sanya to that karakam and his behavior is limited only to objects of these 16 verbal roots and their synonyms. Okay, the 16 verbal roots are as follows. They divide into two categories, 12 plus 4. Why 12 plus 4? We will see that shortly because in the passive, the objects of these 12 verbal roots, the first 12, they behave in a certain manner while the objects of the remaining four roots, they behave in a different manner. Okay, let's take a look at these verbal roots. The first one is duha, which is duha. Duha Prapurane from the 
adadi ganaha means to milk second one is yach which is to yachru yashnyayam from the bhadi ganaha which means to beg the third one is pach du pachash paake from the bhadi ganaha which means to cook the fourth one is danda which is danda danda nipate from the churadi ganaha now one point to remember here is that in order to exhibit this behavior of taking two objects these verbal roots have to be used in a certain shade of meaning for example here dand does not mean here to punish or to beat up dand here means to fine or to take a fee or fine that is the meaning of dand over here otherwise we will not have this behavior of taking two objects okay the fifth verbal root is rudh rudhir avarane this is of course the first verbal root in the rudhadi ganaha means to confine or restrict or shut up the sixth verbal root is prach which is prach nipsayam from the tudadi ganaha prach means to ask or inquire the seventh verbal root is chi which is chi chayane from the swadi ganaha means to pluck or to gather the eighth verbal root is bru which is bru vyaktayam vachi from the adadi ganaha it means to expound or narrate the ninth one is shas which is shasu anushishtau from the adadi ganaha which means to teach the tenth verbal root is ji which is ji abhivave from the bhadi ganaha which means to win the eleventh one is manth which is manth vilodane from the bhadi ganaha and also the kriyadi ganaha it means to churn out or extract by churning not simply churning but to churn out or extract by churning and the 12th one is musha which is musha steye from the kriyadi ganaha it means to steal or rob and the remaining four are ni which is ning prapane from the bhadi ganaha which means to lead and the next one is ru which is rang harane also from the bhadi ganaha it means to take away the next one is krusha which is krusha vilekhane from the bhadi ganaha it means to drag and the last one is vah which is vah prapane which means to carry Note here is that the above twelve plus four sixteen verbal roots and their synonyms are called dvikarmakaha because they are capable of taking two objects, a primary object called the pradhana karma or mukhya karma, and a secondary object called the gauna karma. The pradhana karma or mukhya karma gets the karma sanya by one four forty nine karturi psita tamang karma, and the gauna karma gets the karma sanya by this sutra one four fifty one a kajitan. Now we already mentioned that the reason for putting these verbal roots into two classes, one of twelve verbal roots and other of four verbal roots, is that in the passive the twelve behave in a certain way and the four behave in a certain way. Note here says gaune karmani duyade he pradhane ni r. krishvaha which means that in the passive construct karmani prayogaha the secondary object gauna karma of the 12 verbal roots duh etc is expressed it is abhihitam while the primary object pradhana or mukhya karma of the four verbal roots ni etc is expressed this is the difference and this is the reason for splitting the 16 verbal roots into two classes it will become clear as we take examples here let's look at these examples first example here is gor dogdhi payaha which someone milk milk from the cow now the speaker does not want to express the cow as a apadana karakam that from which milk is milked then by this sutram 1451 akatitancha go gets the karma sanya and then takes the dvitiya vibhakti by karmani dvitiya 232 so we get the form gam dogdhi payaha In the sentence gor dogdhi payaha go has the apadana sanya and it takes the fifth case affix panchami vibhakti hi we get the form go ho while in the sentence gan dogdhi payaha by this sutram 1451 go gets the karma sanya because the speaker does not want to express go as the apadana karakam so therefore 1451 comes and assigns go the karma sanya and then it takes the dvitiya vibhakti hi by 232 karmani dvitiya and we get the form gam so these are the two ways to express the same meaning milking milk from the cow the second sentence gan dogdhi payaha we cannot translate into english literally doesn't sound 
sound good in english so we have to still say milking milk from the cow even though in sanskritam it is a choice of having two objects in english that doesn't sound good okay now what happens in the passive which one of these two objects becomes abhitam which one is expressed in the passive which one is passivized so to speak and of course we know that the one that is passivized the one that is expressed can no longer take dvitiya bhakti it will take the prathama bhakti because karmani dvitiya only applies anabhihite if the karmatvam is already expressed by the tingantam pradam or krudantam pradam then we have to use the prathama bhakti to simply express the meaning of the nominal stem pratipadika artha matre now we already mentioned gaune karmani duhya dehe which means in a passive construct the secondary object the gauna karma the 12 verbal roots duha etc is expressed so your secondary object is go so that is expressed so we get the sentence gaur duyate payaha gauhu is prathama ek vachanam now duyate the tingantam padam lakara is used in the sense of the object is a karmani prayoga passive construct is expressing the gauna karma which is go so we get the prathama vibhakti following go and we get gauhu we cannot use dvitiya because dvitiya vibhakti by 2 3 karmani dvitiya is only when the karma is anabhitam here it has become abhitam it's already expressed by duyate so therefore gauhu is prathama ek vachanam paya remains as paya as vitya ek vachanam that is not expressed by duyate similarly there are many examples baler yachate vasudham vamana deva lord vishnu he requests or begs the earth from bali Now when the speaker does not want to express bali as the ablation the apadana karakam then bali gets the karma sanya by 1451 akathitancha and we get the sentence balim yachate vasudha bali is begged the earth which is the pradhana karma the ipsita tamam it is clearly vasudha because that is what the doer in this case lord vishnu vamanaha wants to obtain through the action of begging now in the passive voice the gauna karma which is bali that gets passivized that gets expressed it becomes abhitam so then bali takes the prathama bhakti so we get balir yachyate vasudham in the passive similarly tandulai rodanam pachati he cooks cooked rice by uncooked rice or rice grains or he cooks uncooked rice into cooked rice so here the cooked rice is the ipsita tamam that is the pradhana karma so if the speaker does not want to express tandula as a karana karakam then 1451 assigns the karma sanya to it and we get the sentence tandulan udanam pachati again in the passive voice the secondary object gets passivized gets expressed and we get tandula udanam pachyante the rice grains get cooked into cooked rice next one garge bhya shatan dandayati someone finds the gargas 100 clearly the 100 the money is the ipsita tamam that is the prathana karma in the passive voice the gauna karma is expressed so we get gargaha chatan dandyante the gargas are find 100 the next one is vraje varunadhi gam vraje avarunadhi gam which means someone constrains the cow to the cow pen the cow is the main object of the constraining or restraining if the speaker does not want to express vraja as the adhikarana karakam then 1451 assigns vraja the karma sanya and we get vrajam avarunadhi gam the passive voice we have vrajo varudhyate gam the secondary object is expressed Now, this one is difficult to translate to english in the passive in english we would say the cow is constrained to the cow pen but how do we translate vrajo varudhyate gam literal translation will not sound good at all it will sound like the cow pen is constrain the cow it doesn't work in english so in english literal translation of some of these cannot be used we just have to say the cow is restrained to the cow pen even though that's not the way it is expressed in sanskritam something to keep in mind with regard to this special behavior in sanskritam okay next one is manavakat panthanam prichati someone inquires directions the road means directions from the boy athava 
manavakam panthanam prichati manavaka is the gauna karma the passive voice gets expressed we get manavakaha panthanam prichate the boys inquired the road or the direction next one is vrikshadavachanoti phalani someone plucks or gathers fruits from the tree the, obviously the fruits is the eaps is the tamam while the vriksha is the secondary object so we have vriksham avachanoti phalani as the alternate form the passive voice the secondary object gets expressed and we get vriksho vachiyate phalani next one is manavakaya dharmam brute shastiva someone expounds or teaches dharma to the boy dharma is the main object while well, manavaka the boy is the secondary object so we get the alternate form manavakam dharmam brute shastiva in the passive the secondary object the boy is expressed so we get manavako dharmam uchyate dharmam shishyate va next one is shatanjayati devadatta somebody wins a hundred from devadatta athava shatanjayati devadattam of course the 100 the money is the most desired so devadatta is a secondary object that is expressed in the passive and we get shatan jiyate devadattaha similarly sudham khira nidher matnati someone extracts nectar by churning the ocean matnati in the sense not just churning but to extract by churning clearly the nectar is the most desired here hence kshira nidhi is the secondary object so we get the alternate form sudham kshira nidhim matnati the passive voice sudham kshira nidhir matyate the secondary object which is kshira nidhi gets expressed and finally devadatta chatam mushnati someone steals a hundred from devadatta again the hundred the money is the most desired devadatta is the secondary object so we get the form devadattam chatam mushnati in the passive the secondary object is expressed so we get devadatta chatam mushyate now the remaining four what happens is that the primary object is expressed in the passive so example here is gramo jan nayati harati karshati vah tiva someone leads or takes away or drags or carries the goat into the village now if the speaker does not want to express grama as the adhikaranam then 1451 allows grama to take the karma sanya and hence dvitiya vakti by karmani dvitiya 232 and we get the form gramam ajan nayati harati karshati vah tiva now in the passive it is the primary object the prasad ana karma the mukhya karma which is expressed which is passivized which becomes abhihitam so gramam aja niyate riyate krishyate uyyate va actually this is the example which sounds very good in english the goat is led or is taken away or dragged or carried to the village so this example you can remember as a starting point because it uh, translates very nicely into english so here the primary object which is aja the goat the ipsitatamam that is expressed in the passive it's the opposite in the case of the prior 12 verbal roots so, so keep this example in mind at least that's the way i find it easy to remember this is that the goat is led to the village is very intuitive example in english remember that one that's in the case of these four verbal roots the remaining 12 is the other way around the secondary object is expressed in the passive now the comment here which you already have discussed previously is artha nibandhane yam sanya artha nibandhana yam sanya which means that this sanya this karma sanya designation it is not limited in the case of just these 12 plus 14 equals 16 specific verbal roots but it also applies in the case of verbal roots which have the same artha same meaning as these 16 as any one of these 16 for example balim bhik bhikshate vasudham instead of vyachate we have bhikshate dhatu bhiksh used in the same meaning so we can still have this behavior of two objects because bhikshate is the same meaning as yachate similarly manavakan dharmam bhashate abhidate vakti 
सो यर भाषते अभिधत्ते वक्ति सेम मीनिंग एज ब्रूते सो देर फॉर टू ऑब्जेक्ट आर अलाउड डजन हैव टू बी वन ऑफ दीज सिक्सटीन स्पेसिफिक वर्बल रूड इसम ऑफ दीज सिक्सटीन ऑफ एनी वन ऑफ दीज सिक्सटीन ऑल्सो क्वालिफाइज टू टेक टू ऑब्जेक्ट 